Enter Catch by the powerhouse that is novel music. Catch is an instant sampler made in Max for Live. It addresses this instant sampling issue directly with a dead simple yet elegant UI that takes nearly zero resources from your system. So what can you do with Catch? Let's check it out. Okay, so here's catch, and as you can see, this is just a dead simple user interface. We're gonna choose an input, right? Let's choose external input, and we're just gonna choose my microphone. So my microphone is coming in down channel two, and you can see this handy little input meter just showing you that right there. What catch needs is to live on a MIDI track because it's a MIDI instrument, all right? But you can choose an audio input right here. It's super simple. All right, so next we're just gonna turn on MIDI arm. And what this means is that the moment you hit a MIDI note, catch will start recording. The moment you pick your finger up, catch will stop recording. It really is that simple. So there's my voice, and now I can play it. Now here I'm using Ableton Push 3, and there is push integration with Catch. Does that mean you have to use Push to use Catch? Of course not. It's just got some convenient mappings. You can map this to any MIDI controller, any keyboard, it doesn't matter. You can use anything you want. But here, you can see that arm is always all the way over to the right right there. So if I want to record a different sample, I can just go bleh, 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 bleh. Sick. All right, so <laughs> you can just record a sample very quickly. It's just awesome, all right? So that's the basic way that you use catch. You can, of course, change the position. So if I want less blah and I just want eh, I can just go by changing the position. And this will change the start position, of course, of the sample. Of course, I can change how long the sample is and so on, but before we get into the weeds of all that, let's take a look at a practical application of catch. So I'm moving over to this catch rack. So here you can see we've got 16 full instances of catch living inside an Ableton drum rack. This is so unbelievably powerful because what we can do is not just feed catch audio from incoming sources like external inputs, but we can feed catch audio coming from literally anywhere, okay? That means you can actually feed audio audio in coming from other tracks. So what I've got here is I've actually got a bunch of royalty-free samples I downloaded from Splice. And what I can do with Catch is I can simply record directly into Catch and instantly play back samples in whatever order I want. So maybe I want to remix some drums. It really is this simple. So check this out. I'm just going to play these drums so you can hear what the sample is. So that's my sample, right? Let's say I want to instantly remix this. So all I need to do is simply turn a arm all knob right here where it says arm all. This is mapped to every single one of these MIDI arm buttons, okay? So every single one of these catches is now ready to record, all right? Let's go ahead and do this. Now, Right? It's that quick. It's just ultra fast and ultra musical and brings the instrument aspect back into sampling. So let's go ahead and record some more into this drum rack. I have a bass track here. Let's go ahead and record into that. So... So now I have some bass. Super simple. Let's go ahead and move on to this next track. Cool, let's go ahead and record that, so... So now I've got drums, I've got bass, I've got some of these sounds. And I've got one more, let's do this flute. Okay, cool. Bunch of different stuff. Now because this is living in a drum rack, I can record this as a clip. Right? So check this out.
Cool, so I've got this little drum loop clip. Let's take a look at the clip now. You can see that these samples have been committed to a clip. Right, that simple. So I'll go ahead and turn off the click track, and now I can just go ahead and play my samples into this clip and have a super rapid approach at making remix-based or sample-based music, right? Now hopefully this excites you like it excites me. I can make sample-based, remix-based music instantly. I can listen to any incoming audio source. Maybe I've been tasked with remixing another song. Maybe I don't want to sit here and get into the weeds with loading it into all these different crazy samplers and devices. I could just literally record and push my finger down when there's a sound coming up that I want to use. It really is that quick. And so with this effects chain that I've designed here, I've also made it so that when you play through this effects chain inside of this uh, catch rack, there isn't any processing happening in its vanilla state when you load it up. Uh, so it's effectively it's bypassed. But let's go ahead and go over some of these controls here. Okay, so arm all obviously will arm all 16 of the pads. So in case you want to resample something, it's just as quick as arming all the pads or not with this one knob. And then next, of course, there's a drum bus. So let's go ahead and add the drum bus to this. So instantly now the audio is a bit thicker. It's got a bit more dynamic processing on it. The next thing we can do is we can add this compressor. I've got a single knob compressor added in here so that it kind of uh, does the makeup gain thing as it does the compression thing. Let's go ahead and listen to it as I add it. And so I've added also a reverb here, and I've done something interesting with it. It actually isn't at the end of the chain, and I've done that on purpose because a lot of sample-based music contains reverb inside of the sample itself. So if you've got a dry sample going on, sometimes when you do sampling, you add compression after it, and it gives you a, a specific sound. So in this case, check out what happens here. So essentially, I designed this catch rack for instant vibe. Essentially, I'm trying to make a situation where you can create really compelling uh, drum loops and sample loops very, very quickly, very rapidly. That's the whole idea with catch and the whole idea with this rack is so that you can make compelling music very rapidly. That's the idea. So now we can get into some of the features inside of catch. Let's take a look at some things. So maybe this sample right here. <laughs> Maybe that's not starting where I want it to. I can actually go into each individual catch and take a look at its controls. So here I am looking in a catch, and you can see that we have position and length. Position essentially determines where the sample is going to begin. So let's go ahead and get that little bit of, of sample at the beginning out of there. Maybe that's all I want there. And of course, you can hear a little bit of click at the beginning of that sample, so I can, of course, open attack a bit. Right, and then there's release for when I pick my finger up. These are just some really fast controls to help you rapidly shape a sample as well. And the idea is that you have instant access to these so you can do it in a live sense if this is a live performance, right? So something else I think that's worth pointing out is that Catch has its own sample bank system built into the actual device. And so you can see that I have sample A right here. If I actually go to this other Catch instance, I just drag the Catch directly into the set, and that's how I recorded my voice here. You can actually see that sample A1 is loaded into this Catch, and it's shared between the Catches inside of your set. So here you can hear... I'm now playing that kick drum chromatically because I have a catch set up on its own track instead of a catch set up in a drum rack. So let's go ahead and move to maybe another farther away sample. How about A5? And we can hear that that is the bass, right? So you understand you can have bank A through H of samples and then you can have up to 16 samples per bank uh, per Ableton set that you're using catch in. And that's so many samples that you have instant access to. It's just crazy. There's a lot of flexibility here, okay? Ian decided to come up with some extra fun things that you can do with catch outside of just directly instantly sampling, okay? Now getting into some of the other features with catch, we can see that we have a gate mode or a trigger mode. What gate mode means is that when my finger is pressed, it will actually stop the sample if I lift my finger up. So I can do some very rapid 
Or if I put it on trigger mode, however, it'll actually play through the whole sample regardless of how long my finger is pressed. Now what's cool about this is we can also turn on auto trigger and what this will do is this will simply play the sample over and over again based on my settings over here. This is how fast it's going to be playing that sample. So what's cool about this is that I could actually modulate some of these things and get some really awesome granular stuff going on. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go up here and grab an LFO. And I'll take this LFO and map it to what the playback speed is. I'll change the depth. And of course I could grab a couple more LFOs and modulate some of the other parameters. Maybe I'll do which direction it's playing back in. Another one I can do is ratio. So ratio essentially is the speed or the pitch of the sample, right? So... So of course there's some really interesting sound design potential here. The more LFOs you add and map them to different places such as the position of the sample. Let's go ahead and slow this way down so we can just kind of navigate through this sample and do some other things here. Another thing we can do is maybe change the attack and release of the sample so that even if we're in gate mode, it will still have some release. Let's go ahead and we'll just go ahead and use the same LFO here for that. So release is changing over time. Definitely got to add some reverb to that. So yeah, it's just so cool. Ian always comes up with some really interesting, creative ways of interacting with these devices that he creates. It's just wild, right? Now, in case you don't know already, Ian of Novel Music has created some amazing tools within Max for Live, especially when it comes to sequencing. As a fan of his creations, I reached out to him expressing that I felt that there was this big hole in sampling. In the same way that a guitarist's instrument is a guitar, a sampling musician's instrument is a sampler. If a guitarist can get an immediate sound from plucking a string, a sampling artist should be able to get an immediate sound by striking a pad or playing a key right after sampling. And thus, Catch was born. Now, full disclosure, I don't stand to benefit from the sales of this device. I just wanted it to exist in the first place. Any sales of Catch go directly to Ian of Novel Music, who put the sweat into its creation and deserves all the good things coming to him for being such a talented developer. Ian simply asked me to make the effects for the Catch drum rack, and now I get this nifty little street cred on the device. All right, so here's another weird example using a bunch of modulation on Catch to create some really interesting results. Here, I've recorded that same drum loop into a bunch of diff different sample slots in bank A of the catch system, and I'm using an arpeggiator to trigger the actual notes. And I have one note going in on inside of this clip, and you can see that we are just triggering some random different things and we're modulating some stuff. So take a listen to this. And so by changing the ratio or the speed of playback, we can get some uh, lower or higher pitched drum samples. Now, of course, it sounds a bit weird by itself, but once you add the drum loop back over top of it, it actually adds some really interesting and maybe more advanced kinds of sounds than your standard beat repeat would do. Now, what's cool about this is that, remember, Catch is always listening if you want it to. So what I could do is I could play maybe this sample here. I could play this sample and resample it into the catch system, into catch's bank system where it's recognizing what samples it has in it, and I can add this to the nonsense or to the fray right here. I'll show you what I mean. Maybe it makes more sense to just go ahead and do it. So I'm going to arm all, and what's happening with this first catch system in the first track is that it's randomly playing one of these 16 pads at any time. So if I add maybe uh, this sample, maybe uh, four samples of this sample right here, the guitars and strings, to the catch system, it will, over time, add it to this 
uh, random playback that's happening at really fast speeds, and it will add another layer of interest to what we have going on here. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop this clip, and I'm going to play this clip and sample it into these top uh, slots here. So let's go ahead and do that. Great, so now we've got some more material. Let's go ahead and go back to this catch rack and play it and take a listen to what happens now. I'll just play it by itself. So maybe I'll make this a useful musical interval like two, so that means that we're going up an octave. Right, so now we can hear it's playing back random samples, not just from the drums, but from that loop. So we'll go ahead and put the drum sample back over it and now we get... just so cool. Now, of course, I've only scratched the surface of what this device can do. I also wanted to leave it up to Ian when he makes his videos about this device to show you some of the other features that he's built into it, because he's put a lot of thought and a lot of love into this thing. So again, if you want to get this thing, the link to it is down in the description and comments. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please support Novel Music. Ian is an incredible developer, and he deserves all the love that he can get. Cool. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.